Shiksha Sanskrit, siksa iast, siksa is a Sanskrit word, which means, "...instruction, lesson, learning, study of skill". It also refers to one of the six Vedangas, or limbs of Vedic studies, on phonetics and phonology in Sanskrit. Shiksha is the field of Vedic study of sound, focusing on the letters of the Sanskrit alphabet, accent, quantity, stress, melody and rules of euphonic combination of words during a Vedic recitation. Each ancient Vedic school developed this field of Vedanga, and the oldest surviving phonetic textbooks are the Pratishakas. The Paninaya Siksa and Naradiya Siksa are examples of extant ancient manuscripts of this field of Vedic studies. Shiksha is the oldest and the first auxiliary discipline to the Vedas, maintained since the Vedic era. It aims at construction of sound and language for synthesis of ideas, in contrast to grammarians who developed rules for language deconstruction and understanding of ideas. This field helped preserve the Vedas and the Upanishads as the canons of Hinduism since the ancient times, and shared by various Hindu traditions. Etymology Shiksha literally means, "...instruction, lesson, study, knowledge, learning, study of skill, training in an art." It also refers to one of the six Vedangas, which studies sound, Sanskrit phonetics, laws of euphonic combination and the science of making language pleasant and understood without mistakes. Shiksha as a supplemental branch of the Vedas, included teaching proper articulation and pronunciation of Vedic texts. It was one of six fields of supplemental studies, others being grammar vyakarana, prosody chandas, ritual kalpa, etymology nirukta, and astrology jyotisha. .Calculating favorable time for rituals, the roots of shiksha can be traced to the Rigveda which dedicates two hymns 10.125 and 10.71 to revere sound as a goddess, and links the development of thought to the development of speech. The mid-first millennium BCE text Taittiriya Upanishad contains one of the earliest description of Shiksha as follows Annette Wilkie and Oliver Meebus date the Shiksha text of the Taittiriya Vedic school to be from 600 BCE at the latest. Texts such as this established, among other things, a rational order of the Sanskrit alphabet, state Wilkie and Meebus. Other texts, such as Vyasa Siksa of the Krishna Yajurveda, were composed later. The ancient Vedic schools developed major treatises analyzing sound, vowels, and consonants, rules of combination and pronunciation to assist clear understanding, to avoid mistakes, and for resonance pleasing to the listener. These texts include Samhita Pathas and Pada Pathas, and partially or fully surviving manuscripts include Paninaya Shiksha, Naradiya Shiksha, Bharadvaja Shiksha, Yajnavalka Shiksha, Vasishthi Shiksha, Parashari Shiksha, Katyayani Shiksha and Manduki Shiksha. History Shiksha, states Hartmut Scarf, was the first branch of linguistics to develop as an independent Vedic field of study among the Vedangas. This is likely because Vedas were transmitted from one generation to the next by oral tradition, and the preservation and the techniques of preservation depended on phonetics, states Scarf, the earliest Brahmanas, a layer of text within the Vedas, include some terms of art in the Vedic phonetics, such as Varna and Avasana. The Shiksha field was likely well developed by the time Aranyakas and Upanishads layer of the Vedas were being composed. The alphabet had been categorized by this time, into vowels svara, stops sparsa, semivowels antistha, and spirants usman. The field was fundamental to the ancient study of linguistics, and it developed as an interest and inquiry into sounds rather than letters. Shiksha, as described in these ancient texts, had six chapters: varna, sound; svara, accent; matra, quantity; bala, strength, articulation; saman, recital; and samtana, connection between preceding and following sounds. The insights from this field, states Scarf, without doubt, was applied by Vedic scholars to the art of writing. It also impacted the development of Indic scripts and evolution of language in countries that sought Indian texts or were influenced by Indian religions. According to Scarf, and other scholars, the insights developed in this field, over time, likely also influenced phonetic scripts in parts of East Asia, as well as Arabic grammarian Halil in 8th century CE. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion 
The Shiksha field of Vedic studies arranged the Sanskrit alphabet in a rational order, state Wilki and Mebus, each mapped to the anatomical nature of human sounds, from the back to the front, throat at the very back, palate, palatal ridge, teeth and lips. The letters of the Sanskrit alphabet were further organized by the Vedic scholars into a magic square, making symmetrical and resonant alternate readings of the letters possible, such as top to bottom in addition to left to right. Further, the Shiksha scholars added mudra hand signs to go with each sound, thereby providing a visual confirmation and an alternate means to check the reading integrity by the audience. In addition to the audible means, these mudras continue to be part of the classical Indian dance tradition. This interplay of the gesture and sound in Sanskrit recital, state Wilkie and Mebus, is similar to the gesture of a conductor and the sound produced by music players in any classical orchestra. In Sanskrit, the posture of the performer is an added dimension to those of pronunciation and gesture, together these empowered muscular memory with acoustic memory in the Hindu tradition of remembering and transmitting Sanskrit texts from one generation to the next, state Wilki and Mebus, the methodical phonetic procedure developed by Shiksha helped preserve the Vedas without the slightest variance in the most faithful way possible. It made the Vedas and embedded principal Upanishads the canonical scriptures of Hinduism. The rules and symmetric of Siksa helped the student to master enormous volumes of knowledge, and use the embedded codes and rules to self-check his memory. However, state Wilkie and Mebus, the Shiksha methodology has been not just highly technical, it has strong aesthetic, sensuous, emotive dimension, which foster thinking and intellectual skills in a participatory fashion. The reciter's mind and body are engaged, making language and sound as an emotional performance. The study of phonetics functioned to transform a Vedic text, which traditionally was composed as language music, into a musical performance. Individual sounds in the Sanskrit have independent personalities, and the reciter helps develop their character and their timbre, state Wilkie and Mebus. Naradiya Siksa, a phonetics treatise on the Sama Veda explains this aspects of phonology with various similes, such as just as a tigress takes her cubs tightly in her teeth without hurting them, whilst fearing that she might drop them and injure them, so one should approach the individual syllables. Pratishakyas Pratishakyas are the oldest Siksa textbooks of each branch of the Vedas. Later Siksa texts are more specialized and systematic, and often titled with suffix Siksa. Such as the Naradiya Siksa, Vyasa Siksa, Parai Siksa, and Sarvasamita Siksa, the Pratishakyas, which evolved from the more ancient Vedic texts Patapathas around 800 BCE, deal with the manner in which the Vedas are to be enunciated. There are separate Pratishakyas for each Veda. They complement the books called Shiksha written by various authorities. Several Pratishakyas have survived into the modern era, and these texts refine the structure of sound at different levels of nuance, some adding many more letters to the basic set in the Sanskrit alphabet. Rigveda Pratishakya, 47 letters Shukla Yajurveda Pratishakya, 65 letters Taittiriya Krishna Yajurveda Pratishakya, 52 letters Atharvaveda Pratishakya Shanakya Shaka Samaveda Pratishakya Rig Tantra, 57 letters Pushpasutra is the second Pratishakya of Samaveda Paninaya Siksa, 63 or 64 letters The Shiksha texts and the Pratishakyas led to great clarity in understanding the surface structure of language. For clarity of pronunciation, they broke up the large Vedic compounds into word stems, prefixes, and suffixes. Certain styles of recitation patha, such as the Jatapatha, involved switching syllables, repeating the last word of a line at the beginning of the next, and other permutations. In the process, a considerable amount of morphology is discussed, particularly regarding the combination of sequential sounds, which leads to the modalities of sandhi. The Samaveda Pratishakya, one of the earliest, organizes the stop consonant sounds into a 5 by 5 varga or square. The alphabet is designed such that the difference between sounds is preserved whether you recite it horizontally or vertically. It was extended and completed with fricatives and sibilants, semi-vowels, and vowels, and was eventually codified into the Brahmi alphabet, which is one of the most systematic sound to writing mappings. Scholar Fritz Stahl has commented, like Mendelejev's periodic system of elements, the Varga system was the result of centuries of analysis. 
In the course of that development, the basic concepts of phonology were discovered and defined. The Varga system and the Pratishakshyas, contributions of the Shiksha texts, are elaborate systems which deal with the generation and classification of sound. Other Shiksha texts In addition, several Shiksha texts exist, most of them in metrical verse form but a few in sutra form. The following list contains some of these surviving texts English translation of Paninaya Siksha. PDF, Amogandini Shiksha, Apasali Shiksha in sutra form, Aranya Shiksha, Atreya Shiksha, Avasananarnyaya Shiksha, Bharadvaja Shiksha, Chandra Shiksha of Chandragaman, sutra form, Karyaniya Shiksha, Galaterka Shiksha, Kalanirnya Shiksha, Katyayani Shiksha, Kaundinya Shiksha, Kashavi Shiksha, Kramakarika Shiksha, Kramasandana Shiksha, Lagumogandini Shiksha, Lakshmikanda Shiksha, Loma Mashi Shiksha, Madhyandina Shiksha, Mandavya Shiksha, Malasharmakarta Shiksha, Manasvara Shiksha, Manduki Shiksha, Naradiya Shiksha, Paninaya Shiksha versified, Paninaya Shiksha in sutra form, Paninaya Shiksha with accents, Parashari Shiksha, Padyatmika Kashavi Shiksha, Parai Shiksha, Pratishakyapradipa Shiksha, Sarvasamita Shiksha, Shesharya Shiksha, Shamana Shiksha, Shambhu Shiksha, Shodasashloki Shiksha, Shiksha Samgraha, Siddhanta Shiksha, Svarankusha Shiksha, Svarashtaka Shiksha, Shiksha, Svaravyanjana Shiksha, Vasishtha Shiksha, Varnaratnapradipa Shiksha, Vyali Shiksha, Vyasa Shiksha, Yajnavalka Shiksha. Although many of these Shiksha texts are attached to specific Vedic schools, others are late texts. <laughs> Sound and alphabet Traditionally, syllables not letters in Sanskrit are called akshara, meaning imperishable entity atoms of speech as it were these aksharas are classified mainly into two types svara pratyahara ac vowel vyanjana pratyahara hal consonant svara aksharas are also known as prana akshara ie they are main sounds in speech without which speech is not possible panini referred to svara as ac pratyahara later they became known as ac akshara Vyanjana means embellishment, i.e., consonants are used as embellishment in order to yield sonorant vowels. They are also known as prani akshara, that is, they are like a body to which life svara is added. Panini's name for vyanjana was hal pratyahara, which were later referred to as hal akshara. Vyanjana aksharas are divided into three types. Sparsa, stop Antistha, approximant Usman, sibilant sparsa aksharas include syllables from ka to ma, they are 25 in number. Antistha aksharas include syllables ya, ra, la and va. Usman aksharas include sa, sa, sa and ha. <laughs> Vowels Each vowel can be classified into three types based on the duration of pronunciation more, Hrasva, short vowel, aka matra, Durga, long vowel, dvi matra, Pluta, prolonged vowel, tri matra. Pluti. We see that each vowel can be pronounced in three ways according to the duration of articulation. The unit of time is a matra, approximately 0.4 seconds. Each vowel can be further classified into two types based on the manner of pronunciation. Muka, oral, open. Nasika, nasal. All vowels are considered phonemically oral. Each vowel can also be classified into three types, that is, pronounced in three ways, based on accent of articulation. This feature was lost in classical Sanskrit, but used in reciting Vedic and Upanishadic hymns and mantras. Udata, high pitch. Anudata, low pitch. Svarita, descending pitch, usually follows high pitch. Topic. Articulation Generally, in articulatory phonetics, the place of articulation or point of articulation of a consonant is the point of contact, where an obstruction occurs in the vocal tract between an active moving articulator typically some part of the tongue and a passive stationary articulator typically some part of the roof of the mouth, but according to Indian linguistic tradition, there are five passive places of articulation. Kanthya, velar. Talavya, palatal Murdanya, retroflex Dantya, dental 
Ostia, labial apart from that, other articulations are combinations of the above five places. Dantasthya, labia dental, e.g., v. Cantatalavya, e.g., diphthong e. Cantasthya, labial velar, e.g., diphthong o. There are three active places of articulation. Jihavamula, tongue root, for velar. Jihavamadya, tongue body, for palatal. Jihavagra, tip of tongue, for cerebral and dental. Adhastha, lower lip, for labial effort or manner of articulation prayatna is of two types for consonants Baya prayatna, external effort Spursta, plosive Ashat spursta, approximant Ashat samviarta, fricative Abhyantara prayatna, internal effort Alpaprana, unaspirated Mahaprana, aspirated Svasa, unvoiced Nada, voiced Topic. Articulation of consonants Articulation of consonants will be a logical combination of components in the two prayatnas. The below table gives a view upon articulation of consonants. Topic. See also Shiva Sutra Mandinagari Devanagari